Hey guys, Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about the blood sugar roller coaster and how it impacts your ability to focus. We'll be diving in and breaking that down for you. Before we do, please smash that like button. Love to see you hit the bell so you get notifications of great content just like this. Also, I'm responding to a lot of the comments, so I'd love to see your comment down below. So I have a lot of patients, their concerns are they wanna have better focus, they wanna be able to cognitively be fast on their feet, have good recall, and um, be able to retain information and gather new information better and faster. And we talk about different strategies to put your brain in a place where we reduce inflammation because most inflammation in the brain is gonna activate immune cells. Those immune cells can cause cognitive dysfunction, brain fog, et cetera. And one of the big things most people do throughout the day is they live on a blood sugar roller coaster that makes it hard for them to focus, hard for them to cognitively be adept. Now, when we're on that blood sugar roller coaster ride, most people start their day with a bunch of processed carbohydrate sugar, maybe not some good healthy fats. If they are eating fats, it's usually omega-6, more inflammatory processed oxidized vegetable oils, and usually a lot of carbohydrates with it. And maybe a bunch of stimulants along with it, maybe some coffee and such. And that sets their day for a blood sugar roller coaster. You're not putting any logs in the fire, no proteins and fats that are solid that are the equivalent of logs in the fire. So if you go camping and you put some logs on the fire and use a little bit of kindling, in this analogy, logs are gonna be protein, protein and fat. And we're talking high quality protein, grass-fed beef, pasture-fed eggs. We're talking about nutrient-dense, anti-inflammatory, low-toxin sources of food. And then you know, carbohydrates are gonna be like your kindling. Of course, you have like your vegetables and your low-sugar fruit, which are gonna be less processed, lower sugar, all the way to your high sugar, uh, higher starch and then to your process sugar and flour and grains and alcohol and that's going to be more so you go kindling to paper to gasoline so less processed carbs uh, kindling um, uh, essentially paper to the more processed and to the ultimate process that's going to be your gasoline it's a most people literally start their day maybe maybe a handful of fruit they, that's your twigs uh, and then paper and gasoline. And so they're literally starting this fire and it's up and out, up and out. So if you ever went camping, think of just having paper, uh, a few twigs and gasoline. That fire would be up and out all night long. And that's how most people are during the day with this blood sugar roller coaster. It's creating mood issues. It's creating energy highs. You're alert, you're bouncing off the walls to energy lows where you're just absolutely draining. You're putting your head on your desk, you're needing a midday nap. You're feeling cognitively um, in deficit. And you're not understanding why. And then each supposed high leads to another supposed low, which then you have to use the same method to pick yourself up because you're literally in this higher low. I call it the blood sugar roller coaster. And I use this camping analogy because when you set the right fire, everyone knows that you need good logs in the fire. But then when it comes to their food, they're not doing that. And so I want to just get that analogy in because if I get you to understand a concept, you never have to memorize it. You just got it, all right? That's important. Now, when the blood sugar is going up and down, what's happening hormonally? We're surging cortisol. Well, blood sugar goes up, okay? Blood sugar in itself can be glycating. It can um, be a dirty kind of fuel because it's so it goes up and then down so fast where if we're getting more ketones for fuel, Ketones tend to be a more stable fuel source. Think of the logs in the fire. But when insulin, when blood sugar goes high, insulin's high. When insulin's high, it is going to decrease hormone-sensitive lipase, the enzyme that helps you metabolize and break down um, fats to free fatty acids, pulls the triglyceride off that glycerol backbone, and then breaks the, um, the ketones off of the fatty acid. The ketones being the, uh, will be the, the, the acetoacetate, those are the big kind of ketones that come off of that. And your brain's going to be able to use those for fuel. Now, we're missing that because when insulin's high, blood sugar's high, insulin's high, and free fatty acids cannot be tapped into fuel because your body wants to clear out the glucose before it deals with any fats for fuel. So you're on this blood sugar roller coaster, glucose up, insulin up, can't touch fats. All right, you're feeling good, feeling good. Now you crash because your body's pulling in, shooting out insulin, which just pulls in the glucose. Glucose crashes down, now you're jittery, now you're anxious, you have a low blood sugar state, your body's making adrenaline, epinephrine, norepinephrine, all these catecholamines, it's now surging cortisol back up. Now when that cortisol is surging up, that's gonna have a major impact on the hippocampus. When we have high levels of cortisol, you're gonna have inability for the hippocampus, the memory learning part of the brain to activate as well. So if you look at high levels of cortisol or surging levels of cortisol, in that micro kind of situation could impact your hippocampus and that's the area of brain for the part, part of the brain that's impacted in learning. So that surge of cortisol could have a major impact on learning. And then not to mention 
Not to mention we have the cortisol, we have the adrenaline, that's gonna make us a lot more jittery. And when we're jittery, it's gonna be harder to focus on learning and, and being fluent and, and being able to be more adept. Usually we're more in a fight or flight type of state and it's gonna be harder to do these deeper types of thinking when you're in that sympathetic stressed out state. And most people live that way. Not to mention when you're on these high and low blood sugar swings, you're also burning through B vitamins. B6 is very important because that's a, a very important nutrient for synthesizing a cofactor for dopamine and serotonin. So very important on that front. And so we don't have enough B6, that's an impact serotonin, which converts to melatonin, so that's your sleep hormone. Serotonin also buffers cortisol. Dopamine is a focused neurotransmitter from tyrosine and phenylalanine. That's gonna then convert to adrenaline. So when you eat a lot of processed sugar, you flood serotonin and dopamine into that neurosynapse, but you also deplete it. What goes up fast also comes down fast. And then you're missing the cofactors to actually convert these neurotransmitters. So dopamine and serotonin need B6. They're going to need methyl, methyl donors. So you're going to need folate and B12. You're going to need vitamin C and calcium. So these are important cofactors and nutrients you're going to need. And so we'll see patients on an organic acid test with either overly high or overly low FIGLU or formiaglutamate, which tells us about folate and MTHFR. Or we'll have high levels of methylmalonic acid, which tells us about B12. We need B12 to methylate. B6, right, P5P or pyridoxine hydrochloride, very important for that active neurotransmitter, um, that, that cofactor that is that rate limiter in that conversion. So very important there. And so most people live their day on that. Also, we have magnesium, which is vitally important. And we need things like glycine and GABA and theanine to kind of help activate the brake pedal, which is the, um, the parasympathetic nervous system, helps you kind of come down from that stressed out situation. Well, if you don't have good hydrochloric acid and we can't ionize these minerals or break down these amino acids, that could be a problem as well. So very important. You got to look deep at this. And so the blood sugar roller coaster and the brain fog, which is what this video is about, most people live their life on that path. It prevents them from burning fat for fuel. They're, they're at that fire with kindling and paper and gasoline all day long. They're burning through B vitamins. They're burning through magnesium. They're burning through any amino acids to help buffer stress. They're surging dopamine and serotonin. They're also flooding their brain with cortisol, which is decreasing the hippocampus region from being able to focus and have deeper thinking. So I want you guys to be able to break that cycle. If you have awareness over it, now you can start to make a different decision and have a different habit in place. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, let me know. Put your comments below. If you want more functional medicine support to help improve your brain function, memory, and perform better, there'll be a link down below where you can reach out to my staff and team. We see functional medicine patients from all over the world. If you want that support, it's there for you. All right, guys, if you enjoyed, let me know. Thumbs up, comments below. Have a good night, guys. Bye.